I wanted to talk to you a little bit about force versus displacement graphs. The area under a force versus displacement graph is actually the work. Let's take a look at an example here. And what you can notice is this graph involves a variable force. So the force is changing. Well, we can still approximate the area under this graph without the use of calculus. We can do this by approximating the first area, area one, as a right angle triangle. So we can say one half base times height and the remaining area as a rectangle or base times the height. So if we look at what is on the x-axis and on the y-axis, we have force multiplied by the distance. Likewise, if we look at our second area here, we have, again, on the x-axis distance, on the y-axis force. Force times distance is work. And as you know, the units for work would be a Newton meter. Therefore, this area approximated under this graph is going to give us the work. So in this scenario, I'm using a force sensor and I'm pushing a 500 gram object from rest 10 centimeters across a smooth surface. How much work have I done on the object? Well, if we translate that, that's essentially asking, what is the area under this graph, under this curve? So our first area we can approximate using the one-half base times height to be one-half 0 0.02 meters. Now I converted centimeters into meters, so I was in the base SI units, and about 11 newtons of force. For the remaining area, the rectangle, we have 0 0.08 meters, again, multiplied by 11 newtons. So this is going to give us the work. If we take area one and add it to area two, we get the approximate work that I am doing on this object. Now, if we take this a step further, we can say that the network is equal to the change in kinetic energy. In the last video, I taught you a little bit about the work energy theorem and how net work equals the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. So in this particular problem here, you are now being asked, how fast is the object moving? Well, that means we can use the net work that we found by calculating the area under the graph, and we can set that equal to the change in kinetic energy. Well, remember that this object starts at rest, and that's very important because it starts at rest. We know its initial velocity is zero. Therefore, we can wipe out that portion of the expression, and we're left with 0.99 joules is equal to one half mv final squared. Let's take this and rearrange it, do a little bit of algebra, plug in some values, and we can see that when we multiply both sides by two to get rid of the one half and divide both sides by half a kilogram to get rid of that, we're left with this expression and of course, we're going to take the square root to find the final velocity. And we find that to be two meters per second. Now, here's an extra credit opportunity. Again, we have a variable of force being applied to an object for a given distance, except this time it is across a rough surface and you're given the coefficient of kinetic friction to be 0 0.5. You're also given and initial velocity in this particular problem. And you are asked to find the final velocity of the object. So why don't you go ahead and work this one out for me and bring it to me first thing in the morning. In this video, I talked to you a little bit about the area under a force displacement graph and that area being 
the work that is done on a given object or a system. And I'll see you guys in class.